So I changed my title. Okay. So the previous title is Central Limit Theorem for Supercritical Superprocesses. So I then changed it to Matter Valued Markov Process. But this covers branching Markov processes and super processes. So here's the outcome. So first, uh, let's look at the, the classical limit theorem for IID sequence. So we know that uh, if we are given a sequence of IID random variables, and uh, mu is the mean for each xi, uh, the sum of, of the first uh, n random variable divided by n according to the strong law of large numbers, this random variable has a limit, almost a limit of mu. Okay, this is the strong law of large numbers. So the second one is the central limit theory. So if this sum is centered at the mean and uh, normalized by square root of n, and then we get a limit, which is the uh, normal uh, run variable, okay? So we can rewrite this central limit theorem in this form. So this, uh, this form tells us that uh, if this random variable centered and thus scaled uh, correctly, and then we get a non-trivial limit. Okay, that's the central limit theorem. So later I will um, talk about uh, other models. We can consider similar questions for branching Markov processes and super processes. Okay. Now let's give the definition for branching Markov processes and then talk about uh, our, uh, our assumption on the process. Okay. Now let's look at some location. Suppose E is a locally compact uh, separable metric space and mu is a matter which is um, sigma finite with full support. I will use this partial location to denote a separate point. So I will use cosine as a Hunter process which is symmetric with this uh, reference matter mu. I will use PT to denote the subgroup of this hunt process. Okay. Now let's look at uh, what is the branching Markov process. Okay, this process is determined by three objects. So I need three objects. Let's, the first one is the, the spatial motion, which is a hunt process. Um, okay, this is the first uh, uh, object. The other one is the off screen distribution. For each fixed x, x is the location of the particle. So if a particle died at point x, and then it gives birth to a number n particle with this probability. Because I'm thinking about a central limit theorem, so I make this assumption. So the second moment is uniformly bounded. Okay. And the third object is the branching rate which is a non active function bounded on E. So this is uh, used to describe the, uh, the lifetime. For example, if beta is a constant, then later we will find that each particle's lifetime is uh, exponentially distributed random variable with parameter beta. Okay. Let's, let's uh, describe the, the system. Suppose initially we have a finite number of particles located in space E. Okay, suppose a particle which is born at this location and then this particle move in space E according to this law, which means each particle's movement is a hunt process. I have introduced before. Okay, the third law says that uh, if the particle is is alive at time t. Given the path of this particle, if it is alive at time t, and then at this uh, small interval, this particle survives a dying with this probability. Okay, that's the branching rate, beta. So, okay. And the, and the fourth rule says that if the particle dies at point x, 
it gives birth to number n particle with this probability. Okay. So when the particle reached the uh, cemetery, and the particle disappeared from the system. Okay. So all the individuals once born involved in space. And so I mean branching and uh, move in space independently. Okay, that's the system. Okay, let's look at the process. So now let's look at the process at T. This is the branching marker process. So for each at T, at T is a random matter. Okay, let's write in, in this form. So this, so I mean at T is a sum okay, of the dark matters. So suppose this is X U T. X U T is the location of a particle U at time T. So the summation is uh, over all particle which is alive at time T. So for each fixed T, we need a point matter. Okay. So in another way, for any borrow set B, X T B is the number of particles which are alive at time T. Okay. So this collection, collection of random variables is called the branching marker process. Okay, this is the first model I'm going to talk about. Okay, this uh, gives some uh, notation. So the first uh, notation is R of X. This is, is related to the mean of the particle number. And another one is called AX, which is uh, related to the second moment of uh, the number given by one particle. Okay, so I suppose all these alpha x and ix are bounded in the one e, in the space e. Okay, now I want to give some uh, mm, moment formula for the branching marker process. So this, uh, the first moment for this process is related to the Feynman class transform. I mean that for each test function f, so this function integrated with this matter, we get a random variable. The mean of this random variable is given by ttf. So ttf here is the Feynman class transform of the counterproductive success present t. Also, the second moment is also given in, the, in terms of the Feynman class transform. So, it can be seen that the Feynman class transform plays a main role for the limit theorem for branching marker process. Okay. Let's look at uh, what kind of results has been obtained before for branching marker process. So, previously, there are many papers on law of large numbers. I will not mention uh, papers on law of large numbers. I will con concentrate on central limit theorem. So, but previously, there are not many papers which are dealing with the special central limit theorem. So, let's, uh, here I list the papers which uh, talked about the central limit theorem. The first paper is given by Kastner and Steger, which is about the multi-type, discrete type, discrete type, multi-type, multi branching process. Okay, this is the first paper, which is related to the uh, spatial central limit theorem. And uh, the, the, the second part is given of Ria. Uh, he used the three papers to give a version which is for multi-type branching process, but with continuous time. Okay, the results for these two uh, parts are similar. Okay, for these two papers, oh, not that two papers, so four papers. Later, in the book of Arts, Nielsen and Harlan, they established the spatial central limit theorem for general supercritical branching marker process. They give a condition, but the condition is not easy to check. The only example given in this book which satisfies the condition is called uh, diffusion in the bounded domains. Okay, so most recently there is a paper. Uh, so uh, Adams and Miller they gave a central limit theorem for branching OU process, but the branching mechanism is special, which is binary. 
which means each particle gives, gives uh, one particle, uh, zero particles, zero particle or two particles. Okay. So, but the, the result, the recent result given in this paper, paper is not a satisfactory because the limit, in their limit, the limit can be degenerate. Okay, they get a limit, but the limit may be a degenerate limit. Also, the branching mechanism is special. There is another paper which is related to my talk, which is given by Janssen, which gives the functional central limit theorem for multi-type branching process. So, uh, based on these papers, so we give our, our goal, first we would like to find the, some conditions on spatial process, on the hunt process, such that we can establish, uh, establish the central limit theorem. Okay, we should find condition which is easy to check and we can find a lot, lot of examples. Okay, that's the first goal. The other goal is to establish the central limit theorem for supercritical superprocesses. Okay, that's the, the, the second uh, purpose. And the last one is to give the functional form for the central limit theorem for supercritical superprocess. Okay. Let's uh, give the, the, the condition for the spatial process. Now here is the condition. Okay, we assume that uh, for the hard uh, process percent, we have a density, which is a symmetric density. Okay, with respect to this reference matter mu, we suppose we have a density. So now I give a condition according to H tilde x, which is PTXX. Okay, this is the transition density. So these the conditions we add here. So for the first condition say for each uh, time g, this is this integral is finite, which says a t two time is in L one space. Another condition is there is uh, some time t zero, which is uh, larger than mu, positive t zero, such that a t zero uh, tilde is in L two space. Okay, that's the condition we add for the Hunt process, the spatial motion. Okay. Oh, here I give some example which really satisfy the conditions. Uh, I want to jump the skip these uh, examples. Okay. I, okay. Let's go first to the main result. Okay. Now let's uh, mention what is the supercritical process meaning. Okay. What, what's the definition for supercritical? Okay, we will assume that, uh, okay, lambda one is smaller than, okay, possibly I need to, let's, let's go to this slide first. Okay, so according to the, our previous the condition, for each fixed T, TT is a compact operator, and then we can say a further purely discrete spectrum. We can find all these adding values all these adding values is uh, negative lambda one, negative lambda two. Okay, for each uh, for the first one, for the first adding value, it is simple. We can find the adding fraction, which is called percent one, and uh, we normalize such that the inner two norm is one. Okay, this is the first adding function. For each key, we can find the uh, adding space corresponding to this eigenvalue, okay, this is the, uh, the, the space uh, corresponding to this one, and then all these eigenvalues, eigenfunctions, forms a complete orthogonal base for this L2 space, okay. Well, that's the result according to our assumption, and, and now let's go back to the beginning, to this case. So I suppose lambda one is smaller than zero, which means negative lambda one is positive. And then the, the mean of this process grows exponentially when g goes to infinity. Okay, that's the definition for supercritical case. 
Okay, under this case, the process will survive with the positive probability. Okay, and now uh, let's uh, let's see the okay. This is the Feynman class transform, and and this Feynman class transform also have a density QT. The previous condition on PT now translated to condition to the density of the Feynman class transform. So this ATX satisfy these two conditions. Okay, the first one says ATX is in error one, and this says there is T not enough, and then ATX is in error two. Okay. Okay, that's a, of a special condition on the the condition on branching marker process. Okay, and the third part, is the main part, is about the main results we we got for the branching marker process and super processes. Okay, let's uh, first look at the result. Now, according to our previous slides, for each function in L two, we can expand the function according to uh, given by the eigen functions because this eigen functions is a base, okay? And then for each, uh, for some function, a uh, person eigen function, it is not hard to check that this is a multiple. Okay, this is a multiple. Uh, for the first multiple, xt11, I will write it as wt. Okay, this is a place a main row. Okay, for these multiples, we have a law of large numbers. So for some active values, I mean if lambda 1 is larger than double lambda p, and then these multiples has a limit, has an error to limit. Okay. For, for these multiples, we get a limit which is not a degenerate. I will call this is the law of large numbers. Okay. Let's first look at the, the, the special case, I mean xt11, which is denoted as w1, wt. Okay. Now, let's look at the question. So in particular, for this multiple, this is a non-negative multiple. So the multiple limit theorem tells us that this multiple is a limit which is w infinity, which is in L2. So it is not degenerate. And this is called the law of large numbers for branching Markov process. So when, whenever we get, get the law of large numbers, the next step is to get the central limit theorem. So when this WT is centered by the limit, if we normalize by some function, we hope to get a non-degenerate limit at the, at the end, we will get a normal distribution. Okay, that's the first question we want to answer. We want to prove this kind of result. And the second question is like this. For some test function, so this function is very special, and this is the first eigenvalue. For other functions, F, it is possible that this limit is uh, not is degenerate. So, for some function f, we get a limit which is uh, the projection of function f on the first angular function space, and sometimes this zero. So when we get a limit zero, we want to ask, possibly we need to renormalize this function, this random variable, to get a non-degenerate limit. Okay, to answer all these questions, we need to establish the central limit theorem. Now, I'm going to, to, to look at the, the, the theorem. So, I need some uh, notation. First, uh, the first uh, is a subspace of L2. So, CL is generated by some eigen functions. Some eigen functions corresponding to eigen value negative lambda p such that this inequality is true. Okay, another space, uh, subspace for L2 is all these eigen functions generated by eigen functions corresponding to negative lambda k such that we have this equality. Okay, and the third one is the remaining space. 
which is by generated by Riemannian eigen functions. So for different uh, test functions belonging to different uh, classes of uh, uh, subspace, we will get different uh, limit theorem. Okay. Now, for if function f belongs to C s, we we can define a function uh, is a not function is a sigma f square. This is a constant which is used to describe the variance of the limit. If h belongs to the second class, we can also define a constant. If a uh, function g belongs to the to CL, we can also define a constant. Okay, now the main result says here. So let's look at the limit. Directly goes to the limit. So the first one is the multiple. This is WT. Okay, for if the test function g it belongs to CL, which means this function g is um, um, is generated by eigen functions such that the eigen value satisfies this inequality. So for this kind of uh, test function, we need to center. Okay, we need to center properly center the center the this random variable, and uh, for this term, we need to normalize with respect to this one. Okay, so later you will find this is a this is this one is a limit. Okay, so for other type for edge, if edge belongs to the second uh, subspace. For this uh, test function, we don't need to center because this term has a limit which is zero. Okay, if function f belongs to CS, the other case, we don't need to make the centralization. And uh, for these uh, three different kind of uh, test function, the normalization is different. So take, pay, pay attention to this one. So here we, we did our square root. But for this one, for this one, the, the normalization, um, there's no square root. Okay. <coughs> now, we, for this uh, four-dimensional random variable, when t goes to infinity, we get a random variable. So the first one is W star. W star is the, has the same deep distribution as the multiple limit, but conditioned on the process survive. Okay. So G3 is a normal random variable. The variance is given by beta. For G2, also a random variable, normal random variable. G1, a random variable. Now, all these three, uh, no, four random variables are independent. OK. So for this different test function, we get a four-dimensional random variable. And the limit is a, a four-dimensional a normal random variable and uh, they are independent. Okay, that's the first result for branching Markov process. So here, each test function belongs to different classes. Okay, so it is interesting to answer if the test function belongs to the same subspace. We can give a similar quiz, uh, similar uh, result. Okay, let's uh, go back. If uh, F1, F2 be, belongs to CS, the same class, we can get a uh, uh, binary two-dimensional random uh, limit, and this is also a Gaussian random variable, we can give the covariance. In this case, these two random variables are not independent, and uh, we, we can find the covariance. Similarly, if H1, H2 belongs to CS, we can get a similar result. And uh, for the other class, we also, for G1, G2 in CL, we need to, to center the, the, the random variable first and then normalize. Similarly, we get the two-dimensional random, uh, normal random variable, we are able to give the covariance. Okay, that's the first part. Okay, that's the central limit theorem for branching Markov process. Now, I move on to superprocess. Okay, so like uh, uh, 
you may you have a random walk, when you spill the random walk properly, you get a limit which is brown emotion. So now, we, when we scale the branching marker process properly, we get a limit. The continuous version for branching marker process is called super process. Okay? So the super process is also a measure valued marker process, which is also determined by three objects. The first one is the spatial motion, which is uh, exactly the same as before, which is a hunt process, okay, which is symmetric with respect to mu. You should be mu. Okay, also we need a branching rate, which is the same as the, as the case for branching marker process. For super process, we need another object, which is called the branching matrix. Okay, the branching mechanism is given here. Okay, I think uh, most of you are familiar with this one. For each fixed x, x is the location. For each fixed x, so this phi is exactly the um, exponential characteristic of a living process uh, with just a positive job. Okay, so this is the branching mechanism of super process. Because I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, the central limit theorem, so I make this assumption. Okay, this is the second moment condition on the Levy measure n. So I suppose this is uniformly bounded. Okay, and now let's uh, give the definition. So the super process Ft, which is a Markov process taking values in finite measures in E. For each test function f, the integration of f with respect to this random measure, and then we get a random uh, positive random variable, the Laplace functional is given by this ut. Okay, this ut is a unique solution to the following nonlinear integral equation. Okay, so I quickly gave a definition, which is similar, which is the continuous version of the branching markup process. We can similarly define r of x and uh, ax. We also need to assume these functions are bounded in, the, in E, okay? And then we, we get the very similar result. We give uh, for each test function, because the, the spatial motion is the same. So for each test function f, belong to different classes, we give a different uh, uh, constant uh, uh, as before. I will not go to the details. Let's look at the, 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 the result. The result is, is very similar, okay? The, the only difference is the, the covariance. The covariance definition of a covariance is a slightly different, but the limit is exactly as before. Okay, so here we give the, uh, the central limit CM for super, uh, super critical super processes, the conditions are similar. Okay, the results are very similar. Okay, so I will not go to the detail because it's very similar to, to the previous uh, result. Now, let's go to the last part. So I want to generate the result given by Janssen, which is for uh, multi-type branching process, uh, he gives a functional form. So now I want to give a functional form for the central limit theorem. Okay, let's, let's first look at what kind of uh, result I want to get. So I will use this notation. This is the catalytic functions. Okay, uh, as uh, this is the, the, the euro notation. So of a purpose, is to find the functional central limit theorem. So here I mean that for some good test function f, for some test function f, and, and then this is a random of, for, each, for each time. <coughs> when t varies, we get a random pass. So we hope that this random pass is in this case, which is right, which is uh, right continuous and has left limit. Whenever this function f is good, and then I want to answer this kind of question. First, I centered this uh, this uh, random uh, path. 
Okay, let's pay attention for each fixed T, we get a random path. If this random path is centered and normalized, we hope to get a limit. Okay, the limit here, G, is a process, which is a Gaussian process. We, got, we hope to get a Gaussian process. Okay, that's the, the, the general form for our functional limit. Now, let's, let's give it a, a good test function. Uh, this is a good test function. Okay, if the function is in LP, P is larger than one, and then we use UQF. This is the, um, okay, this UQF is defined in this way. Okay, this is the Q potential of function F. So we can prove that if the test function is given in this form, and then we get a random pass. Okay, this pass is right continuous and has left limit. Okay. Now, okay, just uh, uh, go to the end, and then I will be back. Okay, now I want to get the limit. So we need to uh, find, uh, so first, uh, this function f is belong to Cs. Okay, this is a subspace of L2. H is another time function, which is the second class, second subspace. And G belongs to the the other the last one, which is a test function. For these different test functions, I will give the random path. So for F in this class, we, let's talk about this random path, which is defined in this way. So for each fixed T as a function of tau, which is a which is a random path. Okay. For this function h, we can similarly define a random path, which is defined in this way. Here, we need a square root, okay, t square root, okay. And for this, for each fixed t, we, we get a random path. Okay, similarly, for this function t, test the function, we need to center, okay. For we need, oh, uh, okay, I need to, uh, Sorry, I need uh, I lost the bracket here, the right side. Okay, if we center this random path properly and we normalize with this function. So now let's look at the limit. Okay, let's look at this one. For each fixed t, now I get a random path which is in this space. Okay, so this is actually the first one for each fixed t. This is a constant. This doesn't depend on, on time. For the second one, the test function is used in this form, and uh, this is the, the, the very time t, and, and, uh, and then let's look at the limit. Okay, so our results say that when t goes to infinity, okay, this is a random class taking values in this uh, um, Cadillac space, and then the limit is said that this one converges in distribution to this limit. Okay, the first one is the multiple limit, which is a constant, uh, which is constant in, in time. And the second one is uh, a Gaussian process. Okay, later I will give the covariance function for this Gaussian process. And, and this one here, we got a random wheel. Okay, this one doesn't depend on, on time. And the last one, we get a Gaussian process. Okay, so now this is a constant process, and G1 and G3 uh, is a continuous R2 value of the Gaussian process. We are able to describe the covariance function. So this is a covariance function for G1, for different time, tau 1 and tau t, we can give this one. So we can find the, co the covariance, uh, fun covariance, yeah, we are able to give this formula. And for G3, we can also give the covariance function. Okay, the last one is giving the covariance function for different uh, 
uh, got in process G, G3 and G1. So for this one, if T1 is smaller than T2, we get a positive, positive covariance. But if tau one is larger than tau two, uh, equal to tau two, and then we 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 can get that these two random uh, variables are independent. Okay, so that's the main result. Okay, so let's go back here. I use these two slides to give the covariance function. The covariance function is given in terms of the Freeman class transform. Okay, this is the first one, and this is the second one. And this is the last one. We can give the, the covariance function. Okay, that's the main, that's the main result. Okay, the, here is the reference. So I think I have, have time to go back. I, I, I skipped the examples. Now I, I, I want to go back to the examples. Okay, so let's, let's go back to the examples which satisfy our spatial condition. Okay. So I think I have time to be back. Okay, sorry, I need to. Okay, let's look at the first example, which is set for our spatial condition. The first one is OU process. So, um, so suppose Cassetti is an OU process, we say the generator is given in this form. In this case, the reference value is given here. And then, um, so for this reference value, the OU process is a symmetric process with respect to this random value. We can check that all of our conditions are satisfied. Okay, the, the second one is, um, is a Markov process with this generator. Uh, here, so I, we need uh, this uh, A is not enough, which is larger than two, which means that if we kill the process fast enough, when X goes to infinity, and then in this case, we, the Markov process satisfy our condition. Okay, that's the, sec the, the second example. Similarly, if we replace this Laplacian, lock by the generator of an uh, alpha stable process. So here is a Killing term. Similarly, is the Killing term large enough when x goes to infinity? So here th is the exact condition on the uh, the Killing term. If this is large enough, and then all the all our conditions are satisfied. And uh, here, the last one. So if the process in the domain. Okay, suppose the process in the domain, the domain is bounded, and uh, if the, uh, in this case, so if the domain is bounded, and, and this, in this case, the process present is uh, ultra contactive, which means this inequality is satisfied. Okay, um, and then our previous <coughs> assumptions are satisfied. Okay, so here I mean it, the, the process in the domain means when the process reaches the boundary, we kill the process. For for the particular case, we can consider killed Brownian motion or re reflected Brownian motion. So we can consider killed process. We can also consider reflected uh, process. Okay, we can also consider supported Brownian motion. Uh, uh, killed subordinate brown motion or reflected the subordinate brown motion. Okay. I think uh, I'm gonna sp stop here. All these uh, talks is uh, based on uh, recent work with Remy Song and Li Zhang. Okay. I, I don't. I stop here. Thanks a lot, Sandy Yancia, for this uh, very interesting talk. Are there any questions or remarks? Ah, sorry. <laughs> That's right. Uh, can one hold to get the central limit theorem in the space of measures? Instead of uh, in the matter form? In the space of measures, right. 
You mean that the, the, the in a in a in a version of a matter, this matter, random matter, correlates converges to another random matter, right? Right. Well, we have we have a family of matters, right? And there is some limiting matter take a difference, right? And I want to know whether you know this difference normalized or not. Some Gauss assumes some you know Gaussian measure yes. space of measures or something like this. Yeah. But now in in our case, we just. Um, we fix each uh, test function, and, and actually, if we, we are project to a random variable, not talk about the random matter. So it 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 should be interesting to to think about uh, in the in the sense of matter, right? Yeah, but yeah. I mean, the reason I'm asking because I would, so in, I know very little about it, but certainly intuitively, I would think there are maybe parts of the space or the branching mechanism is different yeah. from some other parts, right? Maybe some other space is uh, sub critical, right? One part of space super critical, and other part of space sub critical, right? Yeah. And maybe the random motion does not like visiting on you know, some part of the space. Yeah. Like visiting another part of the space. So we can, if we could get some map, like you know, map of the space where we would see, you know, what happens in a you know, more super critical part of the space. Mm, I haven't seen that okay. kind of okay. question. Yeah. Is, is it not true that in, in F everything is linear here in the Sorry? Sorry? Yeah, so linear combinations of these random variables over different functions yeah. are themselves of this form, so you actually can do it. Yeah, yeah, we should be fast. Right, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 some uh, linear combination for the test function. Yeah, you can translate that kind of. Well, the only thing that for one class will do a center, and the other, the other class, no center is needed. So you, you shouldn't really translate it, but probably takes a little effort. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but the linear process is the Gaussian process parameterized by case functions, so it's constructed yeah. by field. Yeah. Like yeah. Field. Yeah. 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 Yeah.